Mankind has always been fascinated, by the thought of alien life in our galaxy and elsewhere in the universe. The idea has provided the basis for a wealth of science fiction movies limited only by how far our imaginations can take us. But, can other such creatures exist in the vast reaches of space on other exoplanets or their moons? Are there other intelligent forms of life out there, watching us, right now, observing our society and culture, or, are the distances between intelligent civilizations too vast, the costs too high, to take the long trip, across interstellar space. We've known for some time, our sun is just one star among billions in just our very own Milky Way. But, on the forefront of discovery, scientists in just the last few years, have detected thousands of planets around other stars, finding most stars have planetary systems similar to our own. It's therefore feasible, that there will be large numbers of habitable planets in the Milky Way galaxy alone, and beyond that, ones that are capable of supporting their own form of intelligent life. Some of these intelligent civilizations, if they are out there, may have even developed radio communications similar to our own. For more than half a century now, SETI, a branch of science using radio telescopes, has tried to directly answer that question by searching the sky, for these signals from intelligent beings. But, until recently only one signal, the WOW signal received on August 15, 1977, by Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope in the United States, has a narrowband radio frequency originating outside our solar system ever been found. But, the WOW signal only lasted 72 seconds and was never heard from again, yet still, the WOW signal remains the strongest candidate, for an alien radio transmission ever detected. So, when late last month a story leaked to the press that the Breakthrough Listen initiative, using the Parkes telescope, in Australia back in early 2019, detected a narrowband radio signal. A signal in the spectrum of 982 MHz, a band we know, no natural way of replicating. Not used in any of our satellites, or spacecraft, was detected in the southern sky, shifting just as we would expect to see from a radio signal coming from the surface of a planet, everyone listened. But, making this story even more intriguing, the signal originated from the exact direction of the closest known star to the Sun. Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf star located only 4.24 light-years from Earth, and part of a triple star system known to contain at least two planets. One being Proxima Centauri b of which is a rocky world only slightly more massive than Earth, that occupies the star's so-called habitable zone, the distance where temperatures should be conducive for liquid water, the stuff of life, to exist on its surface. After this announcement, the scientific community has been flooded with excitement. But, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So, today, here, on Interstellar Happenings, we'll be discussing the top 5 explanations for this radio signal from our interstellar neighbor. The radio signal received by the Parkes Observatory, could be earthly interference. Astronomers have to sift through a cloud of Earth and space-based signals. Satellites, radio, the Internet, all surround the Earth in noise. For 17 years a rogue radio signal even baffled the scientists at the observatory. Originally researchers assumed the signals, which showed up only once or twice a year, were coming from the atmosphere, perhaps connected to lightning strikes. When they installed a new receiver which monitored interference, it revealed strong signals at 2.4 GHz, the signature of a microwave oven. Immediate testing of the facility's microwave oven did not show interference. Until, that is, they opened the oven door before it had finished heating. It turns out if you set it to heat and pull the door open to have a look, it generates the interference detected. The signal was the transmission of a young technological society experimenting with radio for the first time. For most of Earth's 4.5 billion years in existence, Earth itself was radio silent. Floating in space without detection. 
When in the 1880s after the theoretical development into the connection between electricity and magnetism, Heinrich Rudolf Hertz discovered electromagnetic waves along with radio. This work eventually culminated in the theory of electromagnetic radiation achieved by James Clerk Maxwell by 1873, which Hertz later demonstrated experimentally. However, Hertz considered electromagnetic waves to be of little practical value. Yet, other inventors, such as Oliver Lodge and Jagadish Chandra Bose, explored the physical properties of electromagnetic waves. Eventually developing electrical devices and processes, to improve the transmission and detection, of electromagnetic waves. Culminating, in the invention of the first apparatus for long-distance radio communication by Guglielmo Marconi, in the mid-1890s. Years later, on December 23, 1900, the Canadian inventor Reginald Fessenden, became the first person to ever successfully use wireless technology to send audio, with the use of electromagnetic waves. Successfully transmitting the signal over a distance of about 1.6 kilometers. Just six years later, on Christmas Eve 1906, he made the world's first public wireless broadcast. So maybe, what we are listening to is the first tinkerings of an alien civilization, much like our own at the turn of the 19th century. When radio waves were first broadcasted vast distances. We ourselves have been broadcasting and bombarding Proxima Centauri b, as well as the rest of interstellar space, with radio signals for over a century. Bringing me to my next conclusion. Another intelligent civilization just said, hello. Like I said earlier, considering that our species started broadcasting radio signals into space only about a century ago. Our earliest signals could have perceivably have made it 100 light years in each direction. That's represented by the small blue bubble, measuring 200 light years in diameter surrounding the position of the Earth. With many stars and planets in this area, maybe, just maybe, one of these worlds heard our message and is responding back. So what could they be saying? Is it possible they really just want to say hi? In turn, could it be this message contains something more intriguing, like highly advanced technology? Or, could it be something more daunting, such as a warning, that high technology leads to destruction? The signal could be caused by a natural astronomic event currently unknown. There is no known natural astronomical phenomenon that would generate such a tight band radio signal at 982 MHz, and the range is not typically used by our spacecraft or satellites. The signal also shifted slightly in frequency, which would be consistent with a transmitter on a planet orbiting Proxima Centauri. However, the shift was apparently in the wrong direction. But, the universe is vast and our knowledge of it small. Just in 2007, the first fast radio burst, the Lorimer burst, was detected by the Parkes Observatory after looking at data from 2001. However, the exact origin and cause of the FRBs are still a mystery, some ideas as for their origin have ranged from a rapidly rotating neutron stars, black holes, all the way to extraterrestrial intelligence. In 2020, astronomers announced they had narrowed down the origin of fast radio bursts, which may now plausibly include compact object mergers or magnetas arising from normal core collapse. But, fast radio bursts until this day are still, an unknown phenomenon. With more research needed, it's logical this signal like the FRBs, is something we just don't understand as of yet. The unusual signal could have came from anywhere in the vicinity of Proxima Centauri or beyond. While it is true the Parkes telescope, was focusing in the direction of Proxima Centauri, there's simply hundreds of thousands of other stars, that were present in the telescope's field of view. Ultimately, any one of these stars' systems could potentially be the origin of the signal labeled BLC-1. Highlighting an issue that has plagued SETI research since its beginning, disappearing signals. 
Unfortunately, the LC-1 hasn't been detected since being first identified in the April of 2019. However, that doesn't rule out extraterrestrials. The ideal celestial alignment of moving and potentially rotating transmitters, along with receivers, all separated by light years and interstellar space, is always likely to be a random incident, limited to circumstance. But, we can conquer this known issue by observing these signals with several large dishes simultaneously, instead of just one. Combining these signals using a powerful technique, known as very long baseline interferometry. With this approach we can zero in on the position of the radio signal to a single star. Fortunately, that's all beginning to change. As Breakthrough Listen now looks forward to incorporating arrays such as Meerkat, the Yansky Very Large Telescope, and eventually the Square Kilometer Array. In the meantime, prepare for an uptick in the detection of ambiguous radio events, and hopefully the reappearance of BLC-1. As with any scientific confirmation of possible intelligent alien life, tracking these signals' location and their motion, may be the only way of ever truly reaching unequivocal conclusions. Searching for extraterrestrial radio signals is hard, and becoming more difficult for astronomers every day, as modern life requires more technology, and the internet moves into orbit. But, the Confident Breakthrough Listen project has some of the world's premier experts in the field evaluating the survey data, and incidents like the LC-1 will undoubtedly occur, be taken into consideration, and ultimately dismissed, or confirmed. So far, Follow-up observations using parks have fallen short of turning up the signal again, with a repeat observation being a requirement needed to confirm that BLC-1 as a legitimate techno-signature. At this time, there is some consensus that the signal may be some form of interference, but scientific analysis of the signals detected is underway, and publication of the results is expected in the next month or so. In a few months, we'll likely know for certain one way or another. Nevertheless, it remains one of the most intriguing signals ever observed by Breakthrough Listen, or indeed any SETI program to date. The stakes are boundless, as the discovery of an artificial radio signal from elsewhere in the Milky Way galaxy, would be one of the most profound scientific discoveries in human history. So there's plenty of excitement and interest whenever anything new is found in the radio spectrum. However, keeping an open mind, and allowing scrutiny and skepticism, with an organized structure for evaluating events is key for success, and that's what we're seeing happen here. We learn a lot from events like BLC-1, and our search efforts are improved every day as we wait, quietly, and listen for the next event, if indeed, there is one. So, what do you think of this fascinating event taking place around Proxima Centauri? Comment below and let me know your thoughts, on this extraordinary radio transmission. And, on the next, interstellar happenings. What is this object in the sky and where did it come from? On December 29th over the Hawaiian island of Oahu, several people witnessed this large blue glowing object lighting up the night sky, and then diving into the ocean. Was it a UFO? Subscribe now for this story, and more, interstellar happenings.